My name is Jeff Linnell, and I am a director and creative director here at Autofuss, and uh, know a little too much about robots. What does Autofuss do? It's a, it's a challenging question. I'm asked all the time. This week, Autofuss is a manufacturing company that does a lot of laser cutting. But next week, Autofuss is a robotics engineering firm, and last week we were shooting traditional commercial. Randy and myself both want to do something different with Autofuss and create a playground. My name is Randall Stowell. I am a partner and creative director at Autofuss and um, an overthinker. Autofuss wouldn't exist without the space. I think if Autofuss was just in a room, it wouldn't be Autofuss. Um, and that's hard for people to understand until they come and see what we're doing, see the machines, see all the gear, see the volume of the space, see the reality of an idea turning itself into a physical object. We agreed that uh, we would buy an industrial robot I was able to get it if Randy was able to name it. That was the arrangement. So we bought our first robot. It's named Puck. And I think about a week and a half later, we had two more. But with a, with a big science background, with a relatively sophisticated shop in my house, I had access to tools. I don't know that nine-year-olds have passions. If they did, I guess mine was building things. I have been around After Effects for 15 years. Um, it's been the place that I can certainly be most effective. Whatever it is that we're, we're interested in technically sort of finds itself working its way into the work. Oftentimes, we'll be tinkering with something, I don't know, brushed with servo motors or laser cutting. And the next thing you know, um, the phone call comes in, so we need something to happen. So yeah, you could do that, but you know, why aren't you using a laser cutter for this? <laughs> Somehow people say yes, and, and next thing you know, we're spending the next uh, six weeks looking at a laser cutter cut, cut things out. I'm a little more on the conceptual side of things. Uh, Jeff does things. So I think with the combo of sort of the pragmatic how to get it done combined with these, these bigger ideas, uh, that defines our aesthetic. Autofuss gets excited about projects that, I want to say, are relatively open-ended, and I think that's where we excel. When Adobe approached us, it's one of those things where it's the kind of project that doesn't come around very often. So I think Randy and I were in complete agreement that we had to pursue this, no matter what the ramifications might be or feasibility or you know, any of the constraints that would normally be on a project. It was a non-issue. We needed to embrace it. I swear this happens in every project. We start with great lofty ambitions and we, we try and regulate ourselves from a business standpoint, say, okay, we're not gonna spend money. But like this project, you know what? We get the project and, and suddenly we're buying an entire array. We're buying 26 cameras, lenses, the technology is set up, we have to build a ring. There's no other way of doing it. It's hard to do something that, that's so wide open with two very strong creatives. The dark side of it is that Jeff and I, we have disagreements all the time, but you know, the conflicts in, internally in the studio are rarely creative. They're, they're typically process-oriented. And I hope that contrary nature is what fuels something interesting here at Autofuss. I think that I found my work to be far stronger um, after working with Randy. Um, even though it's sometimes very difficult for us to work together, he, he pushes me in a way that I wouldn't push myself. That can go awry, and it does sometimes, but hopefully um, that friction generates the intensity that does end up as, as great creative. I think that if we weren't working together, Randy would probably be on another continent somewhere, um, tango dancing, and I'd probably be building some sort of steam engine in a shed and some mountaintop. Ha, ha, ha.